Okay. So, so when I ask you, uh, you know, when we ask you which movie you pick, you, you say a, bla a black array. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Yeah, I, uh, the, the back story is that I, I was a uh, um, juror at the uh, Locarno Film Festival in 1991. Uh, they invited, uh, they wanted a, a non-filmmaker as part of their jury. I'd never been to a film festival, and uh, but who would pass up a chance to spend a you know week ten days in Locarno? So I said yes, and uh, uh, two things. One is I I had no idea that I had to see so many movies in ten days. But the worst part was that I I actually couldn't leave during the movie. And there are so many movies you walk in and five minutes later you know you, you don't like this movie. But you ha all of the filmmakers for every movie sat behind the jurors. So even if you nodded off, they knew you, you know. Anyway, so it was a long week for me. But uh, it, it came down to the uh, jury and came down to two films that uh, were argued over uh, for the top prize. Oblak Array was one of those films, and the other one was a, an American film uh, by Tom DeSillo called um, uh, Johnny Suede, Johnny Swade, uh, which was uh, Brad Pitt's first movie, I believe. And... Uh, the, the film festival was all sort of first uh, directed films, right? So, and there was, it was very international. And uh, it, I, it was the time as well, I guess, there was a lot of political films at that time. A lot of incredible sincerity and, and uh, pathos and stuff like that. The, the, my recollection of, of the experience was that many of the films from, you know, like Algeria or, or Tunisia or India or wherever were black and white films. In fact, I remember this film being black and white. And when, uh, when I mentioned it to you, I sort of described it as a black and white film. Anyway, I was I voted for and argued for Johnny Swade, and I argued for it uh, with a, a great uh, cinematographer named uh, Michael Ballhaus, who also loved Johnny Swade. And J Johnny Swade was gorgeously shot uh, film. It was the '90s. It was very American. It was very uh, ironic and sort of over the top in terms of uh, imagery. Um, if you ask me today to describe the film, basically the only thing I remember about it was that Brad Pitt had this weird hairdo. I mean, like, seriously weird hairdo. And pretty much that's it. I don't actually remember what the film is about at all. But I, I remember at the time sort of feeling like it was fresh and contemporary and, and, and somehow gave a little bit of, of, of sort of opened up the language of film more than this film or other films that were like this did. And Johnny Swade won and, and, uh, and was given the top award. And as I said, I can't remember anything about Johnny Swade other than a couple of images, really. But other than the fact that I thought this was black and white, I could almost tell you scene from scene. So the, 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 it was incredibly uh, penetrating, the, the narrative of this movie. And um, you know, so I was happy to get to see it again and sort of outside of the context of competition. and. Well, exhaustion uh, do you i mean do you do you still like it what uh, what what do you find uh captivating and and it stay with you so many years and uh yeah i mean it's it's ironic uh, for me because it it actually is a lot closer to me in terms of the
kind of art that I try to make, uh, my relationship to uh, to narrative and to uh, uh, sort of uh, you know in in painting, sort of straight talking in a way, uh, and also to a kind of underlying sense of humor about the 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 kind of uh, essentially absurdity of life and. And which I think this film captures so beautifully and uh, and uh, poignantly. And I think actually the colors, uh, even in this poor quality file we saw, the colors are rather interesting. I mean, this sort of the use of oranges and the blues and mm. this sort of livid imagery in in the uh, in the village. And uh, yeah, I think they uh, uh, the yeah it was so it was so t sort of toned down ex and then complementary in that in that way that that was an interesting device it was also something that you know sort of created that that sense of the existential and that it it, it gave you such a uh, a sense of this place being profoundly limiting i mean the w the way i uh, ultimately came to understand this film was that it was basically their moonshot, you know. They, 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 this kid represented the hope that we all felt when we took off for the moon, you know, and on on such a simple level. And the the poignancy in the last scene of him in that capsule, and look, looking looking out, Very looking nice. back, looking at the trajectory forward to a horizon that was unknown and empty. Looking back to a kind of blur and stuff, you know, it, that was extraordinary uh, kind of conclusion to their movies. So. Yeah, and and I think it speaks of the time, this historical time that the, the Soviet Union was, you know, as the idea of wanting to be go go away, leaving, you know, no I no idyllic, dreary industrial mm -hmm. Siberian, you know, Siberian town. Well, and just and just that the, the the Pacific Ocean represents such hope for them. So you know yeah. the the. Uh, yeah, and it's almost there's almost there's almost vamp vampiristic quality that the village has. You know, they, they don't want to know about him at the beginning. They're like, you know, and then they they sort of suck in into this this dream. It, it really doesn't want to go, but they kind of <laughs> run him out of time so that they, he fulfills the, their dream projection. I mean, it's the ascent. I, lo I love yeah. the, the nightmare of of his decision, and then the next, you know, people are coming in and just taking his stuff. <laughs> I <laughs> know, I know. So he has to go. Yeah, he has to. I, you know, I, I I read because I I never saw it. Then the sequel, Kolya come, it was, which was done in two thousand five. Kolya comes back, and they start a big party for him. But then they they, they want to run him out of town immediately. You know, they they still don't they still don't want him there. So I mean, it's because he whistles still. He, he whistles. Would, so, yeah, and and, and 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 another film of the of the same of the same director, which was uh, done a few years after this, which was also very famous, is about a soldier uh, in in Siberia, a young soldier that imp pretends to be a traffic cop. And the traffic starts going around him, you know, and start following him, and, and it creates enormous disasters. So is this is this really, uh, uh, as I, you know, I mentioned Beckett before, but it is theater of the of the of the absurd. I mean, Eric, you said before that this is close to the way it, it the, the way you relate to your to your art in, in you know, in, you know it, what ca well, how would you describe the relationship with with your work and film and how film impacts it if if if, uh, if in any way. Yeah, well, I, I owe a, a, a lot to uh, filmmaking. Uh, you know, I, I grew up watching TV and movies and looking at magazines and picture books long before I saw painting and sculpture. So I was informed visually by that early on, and, and uh, it made a big impression. And also, it was uh, a, you know, film is where narrative went when it left painting, right? And uh, took over that uh, that responsibility. And uh, and storytelling is something, uh, you know, in my studio, it starts with me talking to myself, and and then uh, you know, hopefully, uh, en engages an audience with the same sort of sense that there's a narrative going on here. My my moments are feel like they're stopped in a place where there's a, be a before and an after, and and uh, that's very sort of filmic, I think. So, 
and, and I mean, one, one, one of the points that the series is making, in, you know, without being too pretentious, is, is that, that there is, a, in re especially in recent years, the relationship between visual art you know, and painting and, and, and film has, has, has become deeper. And mm -hmm. do you see that, I mean, it seems to me that not only a lot of painters are making film, but, but it seems that the, the, uh, um, this cross-pollination has brought a closer quality of uh, narrative to film itself. So you said in, in, uh, you said film took over a narrative when you know paintings st stop being narrative. But it feels right now that because of the influence of painting and digital technologies, the uh, this sort of looser narrative quality, more abstract, as 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 uh, has come mm. to film. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's my idea. <laughs> I. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's because of uh, a painting mm -hmm. pushing pushing film, or because we we so naturally have a a, a need for uh, constantly, you know, revitalizing the way we tell ourselves mm -hmm. the stories, because the stories we tell are all the same stories, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and so the job of the artist is to constantly try to. Uh, uh, revitalize them, reanimate them in some way, and sometimes that's, you know, through technological advances, mm -hmm. and and other times through, um, um, you know, just a, a shifting point of view. So. Yeah, no, I, I was thinking, uh, for example, even in big Hollywood uh, action films, uh, w uh, you know, the the edits is so is so tight, and uh, and the action is so. Synthetic that you feel like you know s you feel like some st stem brackage is is, is is moved towards you know big blockbuster Hollywood in, in to a certain extent. It's, I think narrative cinema is becoming more abstract. And uh yeah, I was, I was somebody was, I wasn't part of the argument, but somebody the other day was arguing that that experimental film didn't go anywhere. That Stan Brackage and and uh, Paul Sheritz and people like that were. Sort of very limited, uh, you know. Th they they gave it over to Michael Snow, and that was about it. So. Oh, actually, I think the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think I, th I think the opposite. I think it's it's very vital the avant-garde into into mainstream film these mm -hmm. days. I mean, this this film is a, a, a as just as so straightforward a, a narrative trajectory. I mean, it's it's more along the lines of theater almost in that. Uh, yeah, in the way it tells the story or frames the moment and stuff. But I have yeah. to say the that opening sequence of you know sort of the bird's eye view flying over uh, what becomes increasingly barren landscape, yeah. depressing landscape, and then sort of hearing the footsteps, and then following those footsteps floor by floor down. I just thought that was hysterical. With the echo of, of yeah. you know, of the, 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 yeah. the empty, that empty, drab building. Yeah. 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 Does anyone have any question? Yes. There. The use of music also that makes it slightly circus-like. There, you know, mm. there is a degree of grotesque in some of the shots, and you know, the, the mother, the mother of the girlfriend. Oh my God! Uh, right, <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> yeah. But also, yeah. the the main character ha had such an elastic face. Yeah. I mean, it was it, it's like reminds me of uh, uh, remember Joey Brown, the American uh, actor character from way back when. I was growing up as a kid, but he had this like gigantic mouth, and uh, and he would he'd sort of introduce himself, and, uh -huh. you know, whatever, and this mouth would just open up, and you know, you'd almost be swallowed by it. 
Yeah, no, it's a little caricature, you know, the, yeah, the exaggeration so. of, yeah. of, uh, of, um, of caricature. Yeah, and the kid yeah. was so wide-eyed. Yeah, and, and that last shot, which is this, uh, the, with a blonde kid with, the, uh, with a bicycle, you mm -hmm. know, chasing, chasing the bus, blonde, beautiful. Yeah, and um, it's interesting. I, I certainly didn't make the connection uh, un until just watching it now, but... 1991, uh, very pivotal in in uh, not not just in uh, Russia and the Glasnost that you were talking about, but also in China. There's a whole generation of Chinese painters, uh, Chinese artists, but uh, more familiar with the painters who uh, were trained in the Soviet uh, um, Academy. They're they're in the 80s, and they were trained to move into the profession of portraiture and, and uh, you know, historical narratives and you know, all those kind of things. That, that was how they were going to make their living. And they get out of school and China's changed and there's no, uh, the commissions aren't there, the, the, the thing is shifting. And so they start to self-express. And there's a small opening for them to be able to do that, but they have to be incredibly careful. And so they create sort of these genre scenes, but they have like too many people who aren't smiling, or they or they're, there's too many people sitting on the sidewalk. You know, they, they just sort of add a few things that change it from the, you know, the uh, uh, Chinese uh, social realist mm -hmm. optimism mm -hmm. kind of thing to this, like, undercurrent that things are changing and whatnot. And, and that, that feel of, of the danger that they're playing with in terms of self-expression, in terms of anti-political uh, mm -hmm. stuff is, you know, is very compelling. And it, it's interesting that there might be that aspect to this movie as well, that the you know, they're, they are showing you a Russia that isn't, yeah. you know, optimistic. No, and also the, 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 uh, the existentialist bent would have not been part of, you know, social realism because uh, and there is a lot of existentialism in, in, um, in the film and in the character. You know, there's, there's the, em the, empty, the empty inner emptiness. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and I think part of the reason that maybe this filmmaker is not as known as other Russian filmmakers is because it's so it's so specific, and uh, and the, the 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 Russian films that make the big international fest festival are, they have a bigger, more artsy look, and uh, you know it's Tarkovsky and Sokorov and Parajano. They they are they are uh, uh, transcendental. This is a very specific taste, mm. and I think the, you know. But he's, he he keeps working. He's kept working, and, and you know, and and uh, maybe that ap applies to what you're saying, or maybe it doesn't. But my my sort of general theory about uh, the avant garde is that it it requires a a strong retro guard mm -hmm. in order to measure the radicality, the space between the retro and the avant, right? And if you look at like the history of uh, modernist painting, you'll see that there's always uh, one or two more traditional uh, uh, modernists that are going along, being brought along critically with the uh, um, the more, you know, advanced. Uh, so, you know, you have Picasso and, and Brock, and then you also have Matisse, which is holding on to a tradition that's, that's you know, not letting all of it go. Or you have Baltus, who is, is not letting go of the, tra the tradition that the other surrealists are letting go of. And you kind of move up through that, and so maybe he fits into that. Uh, I think so. I think that's an interesting, uh, really, yeah. a really good observation, and uh, it's profoundly Russian, and yet it's 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 uh, satirical and and and, mm -hmm. uh, and and not you know not of the system. No. Any question? Uh, 
I'm, you're asking me that. No, I mean, I, I think it, it encompasses a, a thing that the politics hasn't been able to actually correct. So it, in that sense, it's very political. But it, it it's showing you a, uh, you know, a society that has very little hope so that the smallest shift in that, which is to say somebody in a, in a fit of, of whatever, fantasy says, I'm out of here. And the next thing you know, it's the, the biggest expression of hope anyone could get behind, right? I mean, that, that shows you that, you know, the, the, at that time, Russia was definitely not, uh, you know, uh, a positive environment for, for moving forward anyway. So. I, I mean, if you think of the um, the wife of the uh, gentleman with the moustache, you know that you know the, the, he goes and visits the vacation, and she's sort of drab, and then she comes down, and she's just beautiful. <laughs> it's another person, and she gets all dressed up because it's she found a reason this for. This is it. I yeah. mean, it's, it, yeah. that's why the film is so great uh, uh, because there are all these little touches. It's so essential, but it, everything is, you know, and the whole relationship with the girlfriend, you know. It's not good enough for her, and then she, at the end she's like, "Ride me, ride me! I'll wait for you." You know, it just—it's just all, uh, you know. It, it's really wonderful. It's really—I'm so delighted that Ari picked it. And I love they called her a terrorist. A <laughs> terrorist, yeah. <laughs> Did anyone, everyone get what she was saying or you want me to? Or that, no. No. She was pointing out, that she was going back to uh, April's uh, observation on, on Fellini and, and notice, noticing the circus element and how the, it all feels like a performance and, and, and what can be found in such desolation in to, in, in, and, and, um, and, and she was just opposing the, the, the desolation of the, of the place and then the idea they're eating caviar. So the idea of, of performance to a higher higher thing of, of, of life, you know, higher quality of life as well. Yeah, yeah. Saw, Waiting for Godot. Waiting for Godot. Beckett, yeah. Yeah. The Far East, yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, everything is painted with a gray color, except you have this orange and blue, but they're also very livid, yeah. No, oh, no, it's there. It's, 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 it's there. He says it. It's Colia says it, yeah. Yeah, Colia says it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's very much theater of the absurd. Very, very, and it was pretty subversive in Russia in 1999, in 1990. Yeah, there was someone there. 
but the but no the, 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 no but the but the, the song it says of black array which is a title of the of, of the film and it's and it's translated like cloud heaven or cloud paradise i don't know the rest of the word but this the beautiful song is the title of the film No, no, it no, it, it, it the, the version that we could obtain of this movie is a file, you know. So and yet the subtitles were there. So it's it's I, I don't know if there is anywhere in Russia where there is a place where one could probably subtitle the song as well. But we didn't have the means to to do it. But it, it wasn't meant to be hiding the word. It's just simply that the, the subtitles that are in, were in the film are the dialogue, and so the songs are not translated. But 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 this is what we try to do with the cinema. I mean, the opportunity to show things that haven't been seen before and to bring in people that are passionate about film to talk about them. And uh, it, it's part of the fun, you know. It's not to be predictable. And and and, and I, this I'm is very. I'm glad to hear you say that because I thought I was way too clever in choosing this film. I, at at first, I thought this would blow their minds. No one's ever heard of this. I'll look so smart. <laughs> And then I started to think, oh, God, what if it's a terrible film? And, you know. <laughs> no, I was actually embarrassed because I never heard of it. You know, and I'm not a specialist in Soviet cinema, but I, you know, I've seen few films and few Russian films. And I was just like, what is this? And uh, so it was an interesting challenge. But I'm really happy we did it. Yeah, and he goes grand, yeah, yeah. you, Gail. I, I live for this moment, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I think we have time for one more, and, and then we have to go. There.
is a, a weird connection to what you just said, but uh, um, I don't know how many of you saw the royal wedding. But the royal wedding, of course, it was at the other spectrum in terms of uh, haves and have-nots, but it, it was something where it was all about hope. And it, it was all about a, a, the possibility of a future that was uh, captivating and different than the one we were we know, and uh, and so in terms of storytelling, I, I don't think it's necessary to uh, you know have it be uh, j just about one kind of you know social structure or, or another, but it but it has to do with finding an essential aspect that is relates to all of it, which is, which is basically that if we can't believe in something positive through our ceremonies, our, our rituals, our symbols, et cetera, then, then we're in desperate uh, situations. And, uh, you know, so, so much of what we live in today is, uh, I think, profoundly cynical about uh, uh, those kind of things and, and you know, certainly within the art world that I came into, so much of it was about sort of deconstructing all of those symbols, all of those rituals, the separating meaning from uh, image, meaning from words, uh, what not, to, to, in a kind of anarchistic way that ultimately left us with very little. And, uh, and, and uh, so, you know, you find something like this where you know, that, that reassertion that no matter what you have, whether you have a lot or a little, if you don't have hope, if you don't have a sense that there's a better future, then, then you're kind of screwed, so. Okay, last. Speak a, li a little louder. Thank you. You know the, um, the, you know I, th I think the trajectory of uh, of the avant-garde was something that was, 
I mean, to, it was so huge and important. And, and Eric, let me just summarize because I don't think. Uh, 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 I don't know if I can yeah. summarize, he, he but he was, de he was, I was defending just, yeah, the I was film defending, avant -garde. Yeah, it was just going back. It was, it was just going back to what we were talking about before about Stan Brakhage and and, and Bruce Betty, and he wanted to. He it, it, it said he wanted to make a little defense of the of the avant garde and said it's powerful and poetic and still very relevant. I, you know, as an artist, I love to wipe out as many other artists as I possibly yeah. can. So, <laughs> forgive me for that, but. Uh, I, I was just, uh, I was thinking that, you know, the collages to the, uh, like the 20th century, what perspective was to the 15th century. In, in, in with perspective in terms of visualizing the world, ways of capturing the world, uh, perspective was an artificial structure that gave you the feeling that you were seeing dimension, you were seeing uh, space. And that illusion uh, was profound. And, and so the perspective was to seeing what collage is to thinking. And, and what collage did was, was sort of gave us an artificial uh, way of understanding how we associate uh, things, how we store and, and how we, uh, you know, sort of piece back together for m meaningfulness, et cetera, fragments. And um, I'm thinking of this in terms of the, the, you know, Stan Brackage and people like that where the collage aspect was so profound and so up upfront in, in their work. But the, the one aspect of collage, something that I've always kind of worked against uh, because of such a profound uh, discomfort with it, even though it's a real, it is a reality, uh, is that it's essentially ahistorical. So when you're constructing a narrative that has no, be you know, beginning and end kind of thing, and you're finding the middle part. Collage makes it even that much more complicated because these fragments are coming from from places that have no connection to each other whatsoever, and uh, and uh, you know for me the question is moving forward is whether that that you know the avant garde has pushed collage to its most extreme sense of disconnect. You know, is it, it can it be pushed farther into that in a way that that somehow functions in art a, in a way that it culturally used to, which was to bring us together, or is it something that is actually working against us as a as a society and as a culture now? In which case, is there another way to rethink? you know, the expressive mediums for, for towards that purpose, so. Well, it's, it's interesting applied, to, uh, certainly applied to, uh, to cinema because cinema is an art that is supposed to bring people together. Right. And, uh, and the disconnect with reality and the disconnect with story is, 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 is an issue, I think. It, yeah. really, it really is. Yeah, it really is. Any? No. <laughs> Thank you. Myrna? Yeah. He was trying to get attention. I mean, the, 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 the <laughs> I think we have been we have, we have been erased here. <laughs> um, next is <laughs> next is the Misfits with David Sally uh, on the two weeks two weeks from now the sixteen the sixteen. Thank you. Thank you.